Hey guys, today I'll be showing you how to color correct your Milky Way photos in Lightroom. So we'll be going from this to this. And I'll also be showing you what settings you'll need to export your photos for making a time lapse. I've included a link below where you can download some sample photos and you can use those to follow along with the tutorial. So let's switch over to Lightroom now and get this tutorial done. So first we're going to import these photos into Lightroom. So these should be all in the link below. It's just five photos, all taken on the A6300, so the file size shouldn't be too big. Now go over to the Develop tab, so we can get the adjustments done. We're going to bring up the contrast, the vibrance, and the saturation, just to make the colors really exaggerated, so that when we're setting the white balance, we can find the right point. Like we want, we want the white balance to be a mixture of all of the cooler colors and the warmer colors. This way, we can get the maximum color range in the Milky Way. So we'll do the same thing for the temperature and the tint. So we get a mixture of greens, pur purples, and the cooler colors and the warmer colors. So you just have to play around with the levels until we get it right. Then we bring back the contrast, vibrance and saturation to zero so that we can do the next adjustments. Now we first we're going to add a bit of contrast to just spread out the histogram. As you can see in the top right is shifted to the left a bit so we can spread it out and make, make everything look a bit more contrasty so it's more so it's easier to see the details. Then we bring out the clarity, which is mid-tone contrast, which may also makes the Milky Way pop, and the vibrance just makes all the colors stand out more. And then we increase the saturation to increase the, the strength of the colors. Now with these sliders, you don't really want to go too high with them. I'd say um, around like 30 to 60 is a good range that you can stay within. Of course, it will vary depending on the picture you're using. For this picture, this is what we need. Then we're going to go to the S curve, which is where the magic happens. This is where you're going to see the real big improvement on the Milky Way photo. So we start off by adding a curve with a S shape. This really adds a lot of contrast and makes the Milky Way pop. So we add the data point in the middle and then in the lower quarter and upper quarter. And we can adjust the position of the middle point and we just play around with this until we see the Milky Way really stand out. As you can see with mine, it was, it's a point slightly down to make the Milky Way stand out. And we want to have a smooth S coming into the S curve and out. This way we're not clipping any information. Now we want to adjust the HSL, so we're going to use this to shift the colors because they've got a horrible yellow tint from the lights. So we're going to shift it to make it more green and natural looking as plants should be. So we adjust the hue. So for this, for the target colors, it's around yellow and green, so that's why we use those regions. And then we're going to bring down the luminance of yellow to make it less bright because we don't want it to look like we added that in artificially. We want it to look natural. So we bring down those two sliders as well for yellow and green. Now we're just going to increase the shadows slightly just to bring up a bit just to bring up a bit more detail in the shadows under the leaves. We don't want to push it too far up if we push it too far, there'll be a lot of noise introduced in the photo, which we don't want. So we'll just stick, increase it as far as we can without pushing too much noise in the image.
Now we're going to go down to the detail tab and turn off the sharpening first. We zoom into 100% just so we can see the impact. As you can see already, the automatic settings have quite a big impact on noise. But we're going to bring down the sharpening to zero because we can always add that in later. And we'll just reset the color noise reduction and we'll just bring it up slowly so we use the minimum amount to get a clean image. Because if we have it too high, we'll be losing color information in the Milky Way and we don't want to lose that. And we'll just bring down the detail as well because we, we're not going to need that for now. And luminance as well, we treat it the same way, just bring it up really slowly until uh, so that the image is not too soft but we're still getting a good amount of noise reduction. And we can zoom out and see how that has changed the image. Now this kit lens has quite heavy distortion and vignetting so we're gonna bring down the corrections and this will actually make the image look slightly better in my opinion because the electronics or the software doesn't have to push up the exposure around the corners to compensate for it and it will look more natural. And the ISO was quite high at 8000 with a slow lens at f3.5 which is why we've got so much noise in the image that's why we have to apply quite a bit of noise reduction if we had a much cleaner image we wouldn't have to apply that much now if you look at before and after this post process has had a huge impact on the image making the image the colors look more natural and the milky way is really standing out from a faint cloudy looking objects in the sky to the real Milky Way. Now we're going to synchronize these settings. So we do this by holding down shift and clicking the last image. Then we click synchronize and make sure we have all these boxes ticked. Click synchronize in the blue. Then we've got all the pictures matched now, ready for export for a time lapse. Now for the export settings for a time lapse. Now we right click on the images, click export and we want to put them in a subfolder to make it easier to import into our video editor for making the time lapse. So we're going to name this time lapse Milky Way or anything you like. And because we've already processed the images we're going to export them as a JPEG and we can if you've got a lot of storage space and a very powerful computer you can leave quality at 100 but I generally use 80 because I've noticed that's a good compromise in saving space and preserving quality but if you really want to speed things up and save space you can go down to about 60 if you go much lower than that you're losing quite a lot of information so it's up to you depending on what you need for the time lapse. If you're planning on doing some slider moves in the software, in the video editing software, I'd recommend sticking to 100. And if you just want to make a time lapse straight from the images, no slider moves or any anything like that in the video editing software, you can select the ratio of 16 by 9 and crop the images in Lightroom, then export them to the file sorry the folder that way when you import them into your video editor you don't need to resize anything it's just ready to go to make the time lapse so you can also do that but I'd recommend just exporting the whole image file so you can decide how you want to do it later on. Mm -hmm.